Good morning. If I had a, a brain, I'd put it into gear. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Next president of the United States of America. He's worth one foot in the grave, man. Boy, oh boy. They did one of these little newsy type reviews of his behaviour. <laughs> and the guy's lost. He doesn't know where he is. And he's the head of the most powerful country in the world. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Huh. Lime to life, part two. Uh. <clears throat> I go to the local, I live in the north east corner of uh, England, Northumbria, a town called Annick, and there's the Morrisons locally, which is quite a major feature in my life, I'm afraid. Within walking distance, even of my old leg, and so on, and they have music playing, and they played this Don't Worry, Be Happy <laughs> song. And I'm glad to say my old brain kicked in, and I thought, 1988, I didn't remember his name immediately, but it's Bobby McFerrin. Such a talented uh, chap, black man, um, from New York, America. He's 74 now, I looked him up. Married, he's got two children at least, a boy and a girl, both of whom are musical. No, I think he's actually got more. Another child doing something else, architecture or something. Such a gifted fellow, uh, musically. <laughs> Looked him up. He uh, uses his body as a sort of instrument. <coughs> to, to kind of make sound. He's perfectly in tune rhythm and so on, so rather impressive. Mm. To life. A long time deed, as they say in Scotland. <laughs> I'm actually half Scottish by life, so I'm allowed to <coughs> poke fun gently at the Scots. That's not poking fun, it's perfectly sensible. You know, enjoy this minute, as my mother say. Do it now as a girl guide thing, isn't it? So, you're a long time dead, so you may as well make the best of things while you're alive. So, there it is. I think one of the reasons I like this time of, for me now, the morning, I've been up from just before 1 a.m. Listen to the world news on the BBC and back to my old months now. Magnificat, uh, Anima, Mea, Dominu. Let my soul glorify, magnify the Lord. Amen. Well, it's the only minute we've got. You know.
watching the audience. <coughs> he did a, a big concert in Israel, I suppose, probably Tel Aviv, or possibly Yerushalayim, with the Israeli Philharmonic Orchestra, IPO. Absolutely packed hall, and the audience, and he was giving people such pleasure and delight, and just his, you know, and then I watched him interview separately. Um, this is probably McFerrin again. The, uh, I've seen him with short hair and sort of beard, and then he's gone from kind of rasta dreadlocks now. Sticks his conductor's bat on his hair, handy, handy place. Can't lose it there. And he's extremely professional and, and um, how can they call it, but playing the audience to get them to sing. So people come in, you know, that's a bit Liz or grumpy or whatever, out of sorts. And through his performance, <coughs> especially actually that communal singing, getting the whole amphitheater of people involved will do one section and the other and then they'll get them. He did a sort of three or four sections of the people and he got it into a canon so he starts one la di da di da and then number two so number one was still going la di da di da and number two then was doing da di da di la or whatever and so on. And he, he, he's so confident and uh, believable and people clearly know that he must go to his concerts just, just to go for that experience of, of that. Uh, I've seen Billy Graham, uh, the evangelist uh, preacher, um, in one of his YouTube videos, uh, I think it's called The Cop in Liverpool. Liverpool. No, it's Derby, isn't it? I don't like the little pudgy accent. But there we go, never mind that. Filled to the gills and just people in the moment just being there and sing a hymn and then he'd preach and etc. It's a gift. Uh, Bobby McFerrin, I'm delighted to say, is a Christian. From, I think, his grandfather was a, a, a minister, Baptist minister, possibly. And so on. So he was brought up in a Sort of Christian home, and he's just his father. I think was a, a baritone, I believe, as well. Um, <laughs> I do pick up on a few salient facts, but I've done um, sort of studied his life. And then the extraordinary thing was, I make films and. Happened to be at the Royal Festival Hall uh, over 12 years ago, in February, Monday the 15th. I looked it up, 2010, and I'd run into this chap. So on my feed was my little film, and he he looked an absolute dead spitting image of uh, Bobby McFerrin, a black man. He was wearing glasses. Bright chap, but Kors was a uh, West African born in Cape Town. Or if I can do the trick, some of white fellow, but anyway, Kors, uh, X H O S A, the language, uh, has these sort of clicks which mean I don't speak it, so I can't tell you what it is, but anyway, these clicks, that sort of thing. Um, 
And I, I just met him there, happenstance, and it turned out he was a driver for a chap called Steve Biko, who tragically was killed, basically, by the South African, white South African military, uh, um, the police forces under apartheid. And he'd been a driver for Steve Biko, his driver, and was there when he was arrested by the state security forces in 1973 when he died in custody, Biko. I'm a white African, I'm born there. Had a Scottish <laughs> ancestor, so. It's odd though. Those two black men, those, the, the chap I met, whose name I've got actually, and his email, he gave it to me and I kept it and I showed it to the film. So, in fact, I've emailed him now. <laughs> I wonder if he'll get back to me. Eugene Skeef, S K E E F. It's the first time I've ever encountered that name. But also with the dreadlocks and great graying hair. So I wonder where he is, what he's doing now. Uh, this was 2010. So he must be getting on this chap. Anyway, I don't know how that works. Serendipity. So La Chayan for life. For those who don't know, I grow my hair and my beard. <coughs> I won't ever cut them, go to my dying day. I was married. I did. We had sort of a wife war. I sired my son, Robert Francis, um, and he committed suicide at the age of 18. He uh, would be 30 years old uh, this year, November the 12th. So oh, that's my personal tragedy. And then through that experience, the last 32 years, God has given me my rock solid faith. I'm a highly intelligent fellow and you know, I question stuff and I don't follow the crowd. But I am a Christian. I have no doubt. Doesn't matter, thick or thin. It seems, actually, that it's a blessing. The more God somehow throws, or the devil, who, wherever it comes from, whatever one thinks about all that, but to me, ultimately, everything comes from God. So the more difficulties, if you like, you're given in this life as an adult, I still don't get it for children. Babies, youngsters. <coughs> How can it be a loving God brings a small life into this world, any life, but then it, it just has this ignominious little life of suffering and then dies. That cry. God is everything. God was, God is, God will be, God was before the Big Bang, God will be when the universe comes to an end. And then another one pops up. And I speak of eternal life, and then uh, another one pops up, and it was uh, Le Trois Cloches, the Three Bells, the Piaf, to me, Edith. Yeah, my partner sells you. I speak French too, so, but it's. Oh, for the love of the breath in your heart, la da da da, la da, la da da da, la da. He's with his group, and then she breaks in with the, the story. <coughs> a 
and for whatever reason, I was thinking that I was living out behind uh, a basilica in Italy, Perugia, in uh, Umbria, which is where St. Francis and the four players come from. Dominican monastery. So there we are. Oh, I am. <coughs> well, I don't know. I certainly haven't fixed the whole world yet. This cat, Bobby McFerrin, bringing joy to the world. Wonderful. I knew a lass in Paris as well. Uh, for whatever reason, just use Google Earth and you can look it up. Um, and it's in Belleville where Pierre came from. It was born, even allegedly, on the street. The La 20th arrondissement, the 20th uh, quarter, Paris. So that was ill and the uh, metro c'est Pyrénées. And it's still there. There's a sort of open place where perhaps there was a building that's been knocked down. And it's still there and it's ce métier des mots. A which being translated, a minette. Beware of words. It's all I've got, I'm afraid. So, Chaim. If only my son were here to share this minute with me. 